Hey, what's up guys, it's John here. Over the last two days, a couple big announcements have been made. One is this new $1.5 trillion infrastructure bill in America. And there's one provision, one hidden clause in this bill that matches up or at least draws a lot of curiosity to what's going on in China and Russia and how this could impact our lives. Russia is now considering a Chinese style internet and we are heavily investing in cybersecurity for our infrastructure and the internet. Well, why is that? What's going on? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how our lives could forever change under a new potential internet. Please hit that like button. If you hit the like button, YouTube's going to share this content to educate more people about things that they won't hear anywhere else. So please hit that like button. Let's begin. Joe Biden signs a $1.5 trillion spending bill with $14 billion, in reality it was $13.6 billion, going to Ukraine, which is 0.9%, 0.9% of the entire bill. But they use this as the headlines and people, you know, they don't, they don't pay as much attention to it because of all the attention going on in Russia and Ukraine right now. However, if you look at the spending, it's quite interesting. 2,741 pages, about 782 billion is allocated for military spending on the Defense Department, while an additional 125 billion has been allocated to the Department of Veteran Affairs, right? We have 13.6 billion going to Ukraine as it fights off Russia, right? 4 billion to help displace refugees, 6.5 billion for military assistance, 1.8 billion for macroeconomic needs, right? Then it also grants agency requests for a number of new provisions, including a $400 increase to the maximum Pell Grant award and nearly $7 billion to establish an agency under the National Institute of Health tasked with building high-risk, high-reward technologies. High-risk, high-reward technologies. Among other provisions is the Reauthorization of Violence Against Women Act of 1994, which expired in 2019, and provided funds to help prosecute violent crimes against women, a measure to give the agency, administration, regulatory authority over synthetic nicotine, however, and cybersecurity protections to help the risk of infrastructure attacks. They do not disclose how much money they put here, but cybersecurity protections to help curb the risk of infrastructure attacks. We've heard so many, you know, threats and people, people, you know, allowing us to kind of get that insight on what could happen, how the world would look, how this all would play out in that event. However, it says what didn't make the cut is 16 billion for this relief, including tests and treatments it was stripped from the bill, right? So we get the idea. They spent $1.5 trillion, 1.5 trillion, which taxpayers are gonna pay back, 13.6 billion is going overseas and the rest is to take you know the system from being this big to this big however we look at this this is march 16th march 16th and this was signed march 10th march 10th so the course of you know a week russia may aspire to a chinese style internet but it's a long way off fascinatingly in india india had the same strategy in 2019 they proposed the same thing and also in, in 2020, almost to the day, one year later, well, actually, technically one year later specifically, same headline, same type of position, right? And so here we go. What are the odds of that? So here we go. Russia may aspire to aspire to a Chinese-style internet, but it's a long way off. Imagine Russia's population is 144 million. In China, population is 1.4 billion, right? So they have about 1.6 billion. Global population is about 8 billion. They have about a quarter of the global population, not including India. If you brought in India, it's a massive country. We could have a situation to where, you know, maybe a third or maybe even half of the world has this new style internet. So here's how it would work. As Russia war on Ukraine continues, Moscow has looked to tighten controls over domestic internet cutting off apps made by u.s technology giants even while other firms have pulled their own services from the country but a move to emulate the internet as it exists in china perhaps the most restricted online environment anywhere is a long way off and russian citizens are still they can still manage to bypass controls of the system but over the last few years companies like facebook meta google and twitter have operated in an uneasy environment in russia they have faced pressures 
from the government to remove content from the Kremlin deemed unfavorable. The Washington Post reported this month that Russia's agents threatened to jail a Google executive unless the company removed an app that has drawn the ire of President Vladimir Putin and companies have lived under threat of their services being throttled. This is CNBC saying this. So while Russia's internet became progressively more controlled, citizens could still access those global services, making them gateways to informational other than state-backed media or pro-Kremlin sources. But the war in Ukraine has thrust American technology giants into a crosshairs once more as Putin desires to further control information increases. Instagram is now blocked in Russia after its parent company Meta allowed other users in some countries to call for violence against Russia's president and military in the context of Ukraine invasion. Facebook was blocked in Russia last week after it put restrictions on government-backed news outlets. Access to Twitter is heavily restricted. Those incidents highlight how big tech companies have to balance their pursuit of a large market like Russia with increasing demands for censorship. For Western tech companies, they made a strategic decision at the beginning of the conflict to support Ukraine. This puts them at a collision course with the Russian government. Co-founder of the Center of Innovating the Future told CNBC he added that companies like Meta are picking policies over profits. Russia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the media and internet watchdog did not respond to requests for comment when contacted by CNBC. They say Russia can't do this overnight. So when they leave those types of headlines, people think, okay, well, this is going to be 10 years out or 20 years out. We don't have to worry about this now. However, it could be a year out. It could be six months out. It could be three months out. Who really knows? Russia's tightening online grip has revived talk about Splinternet, the idea that two or more divergent internets will operate in increasingly separate online worlds. Nowhere is that separation clearer than China, where services like Google, Meta, Twitter, and foreign news organizations are blocked. Instead of WhatsApp, Chinese citizens use WeChat, the popular messaging app with over 1 billion users, for example. Google search is replaced by Beidou, and uh, Weibo replaces Twitter. The country's massive censorship system, known as the Great Firewall, has developed over two decades and is continually being refined. Even virtual private network services that can mask users' locations and identities in order to help them jump the firewall are hard to get for regular Chinese citizens. While Russia's increasing internet controls will likely accelerate the push towards divergent internets, the country is far off from creating anything near the techn technical capabilities behind China's restrictions. It's taken years for Chinese authorities to get to where they are today, and their strategy has evolved and adapted. During this time, Russia cannot do this overnight, said Charlie Smith, founder of GreatFire.org, an organization that monitors censorship in China. Paul Trello, senior vice president for China and tech technology policy lead at Str strategic advisory firm Albright Stonebridge Group, said that China's system allows internet sensors and internet controllers much more granular leeway to monitoring traffic, turn off geographical areas including down to the block level in cities and can be very precise in targeting off offending traffic of users. That is something Russia cannot replicate. It is difficult for Chinese citizens to get around Beijing's tight internet controls. The government has regularly clamped down on VPN apps, which are the best option for evading the Great Firewall, but Russia has been able to evade the Kremlin's attempt to censorship the internet. VPNs have seen a surge in downloads from Russia. Meanwhile, Twitter has launched a version of its own website on Tor, a service that encrypts internet traffic to help mask the identities of users to prevent surveillance on them. Putin appears to have misjudged both the level of technological savvy of his citizens and their willingness to seek workarounds to continue to access non-official information and the many new tools and services plus workarounds and channels that have sprung up over the past five years that enable people who really want to maintain access to outside information channels to do so. Will Chinese firms take advantage? As US and European firms suspend business in Russia, Chinese technology companies would look to take advantage of that. Many of them from Alibaba, smartphone maker, Realme, already have business there. So far, Chinese companies have remained silent on the issue in Russia and Ukraine. Beijing has refused to call Russia's war on Ukraine invasion and has not joined the United States, European Union, Japan, and other sanctions against Moscow. 
It's therefore a tricky path for Chinese corporations. So far, there does not seem to be any guidance coming from central authorities in China on how companies should deal with the sanctions or export controls so companies with large footprints outside of China are likely to be reluctant to buck restrictions. They will be very careful in determining both Beijing's wishes here weighing how to handle demands from Russia customers old and new and gauging the risk of their broader operations of continuing to cooperate with sanctions and users organizations. The Chinese are likely to make their moves depending on the tone from Beijing, according to Prakash. If Beijing continues to tactically support Moscow, then Chinese tech firms have several opportunities. The biggest opportunity for these companies is to fill the gap that Western companies created when they existed with Russia. When they exited Russia, he said, the ability of these companies to grow their footprint and revenue in Russia is massive. If we move into a Chinese style internet, and we have several countries that are excited about moving in that direction and they're actively moving in that direction what could happen is that social media as a whole could change online businesses could be greatly impacted and our everyday lives could be impacted it seems like we are moving at a thousand miles per hour right now but yet still moving at five miles an hour things are happening so fast yet so slow and i think we're stepping into some massive change i'm very curious as to see how america's relationship with countries like china and india and Saudi Arabia and Russia progress over the next couple of years. Could we have a situation where potentially these four countries work together, you know, arms, you know, arms locked, working together to have a situation where these countries rise up and become more powerful than ever before, and the other countries are simply behind trying to play catch up? What do you think about all this? Drop your comments below. Where do you see all this going? Hit the like button. If you hit the like button, YouTube's gonna share this content to educate more people about personal finance, real estate, business, the overall global economy. So please hit that like button, subscribe here, consider subbing on my second channel. I'll leave links pinned down below. Catch you guys later.